We're back with another 10 tips to make the beachhead expedition a breeze. No Man's Sky's expeditions always have a number of ways to make things way easier with little knowledge. Drop protocol, Farseer, supercargo, called by the stars, across infinity and the air we breathe all require building rooms in your freighter, yet none of them require those rooms to exist afterward. You can pay careful attention to the order you build these to maximise resource efficiency instead of keeping the rooms built afterward and having to farm far more resources. For example, your teleport chamber requires antimatter to build, but your freighter's vital systems also need antimatter. So by building the room and completing across infinity before you fix the freighter's tech, you can save some time. Talking of your freighter's vital systems, fixing those will complete all hands on deck, a milestone you don't need to worry about until you leave the first system. However, it's far easier than you may think. The matter beam is not a vital system and dismantling it will grant you three antimatter, two magnetic resonators and five wiring looms. The antimatter and wiring looms will be particularly useful right away for fixing other tech. And as you started with a repair kit, you could even fix everything without further resource gain. Next, with the simplest of all, Linguafile. New players may not have conversed too much with the alien NPCs on space stations, but there are more than six, and each one can teach you a new word. Just speak with each NPC walking or standing around, and not located behind a desk marking them as a trader, and the top option will allow you to request a word of their language to learn. These NPCs will even be marked as visited once complete. Not only that, but you can complete this almost immediately, and Linguafile rewards some useful stuff. Just be sure to claim it inside a space station, as the nip nip buds it rewards are illegal items, and a sentinel scan will reveal them and cause trouble. But if you sell them right away, you will have some great starting cash to grab useful resources from the station. Interstellar Rescue and Fallen Giants can be completed very easily and right away. You may even see player bases marking the location to make it even easier but a surefire way to complete it efficiently is to first complete Farseer. Farseer will reward five distress signal maps, the perfect amount. Using all five of these, one after another, will give you markers to an observatory, two ship crash sites, one crash freighter, and an abandoned building. One of those crash ships will have an NPC by it. Helping him to fix his ship will complete interstellar rescue. Then moving on to the crash freighter and interacting with the black box will complete fallen giants netting you two milestones for very little effort. Fallen Giant also rewards some great stuff, including an S-Class Freighter Hyperdrive Upgrade, which will allow you to jump between each rendezvous in a single warp and allow a fully fueled hyperdrive to jump 10 times. Called by the Star requires you to complete three fleet expeditions, but this is far quicker and easier than you may think. First, build a fleet command room in your freighter's base. Interact with the terminal in the room to get the freighter fuel blueprint, as well as 200 tons of fuel. If for some reason it doesn't give you that, just select the freighter mission in the log to prompt it. Next, talk to the NPC standing next to the center console on your freighter's bridge and pick a mission. Select the single frigate you have for it and send it on the mission. Head back to the fleet command room and cancel the mission, then interact again to debrief it. Repeat this two more times and called by the stars will complete it without having to save up millions to buy more frigates and wait potentially days for them to finish. Signs to Nowhere is particularly easy to complete. You just need to chart 5 waypoints, though many may leave this till last in case the expedition guides us to any building with waypoints, but it doesn't. One of the better places to complete this is a Rendezvous 1 planet, when there for the Rendezvous. Around the portal is a high density of buildings, so just move your ship without boosting too much so the game has time to load well, and use a scanner, stopping off at buildings to chart the waypoint. This will work on most planets, so if you're past Rendezvous 1, just do it on the next available. Icy veins may test your patience. You need five uncommon fish that are only available in ice biomes. There is one such planet in all of the starting of Rendezvous systems, and that is Aki 52-U4 in the Rendezvous 2 system, Surazumi. Very Japanese sounding names in this expedition. Don't worry if you've already passed it, simply entering a Rendezvous system will add it to the teleporter list in a station, the anomaly or player base. But even having this location is not quite enough, as it may take quite some time to catch five uncommon ice fish depending on your RNG look at the time. I would absolutely suggest using baits, and at a minimum mealworms, but spicy chum will do you far better. If you have some bionic lures on your main save and start the expedition from it, I'd suggest whacking 20 or so in the anomaly terminal to use for this in the expedition. Quantum foam is a completely passive milestone. For this expedition you don't need to worry about it. The rewards aren't required at any point, so there's no need to complete it early, and the milestones in this expedition reward 7400 nanites before taking into account excess upgrades you'll sell. So just let it complete as you play. 
no need to focus. It's best to complete both nameless history and historiography lesson together, being sure to keep four or more navigation data from either charting waypoints or the rewards from the aviator, purchase four artifact planetary charts from the cartographer on a space station, use three consecutively to get a monolith, ancient plaque and ruin, then visit either the ancient plaque or the ruin first. At this, request knowledge to get the other type of ruin where treasure is buried, then use the last map. Now you have four markers, one the runes will allow you to dig up the treasure for nameless history, and the other three to get the readings for Nardi using the histiographical dosimeter. Nice and efficient. Uncharted is easy, but it will require full focus. It's not one you'll complete while doing others. The rewards are also not required to complete anything else, so I'd recommend doing this last. The rules for completing this are to discover new systems. This does not mean just any system. They have to have not been publicly discovered by others so not uploaded to Hello Game servers. When you warp in, it will say first contact. If you see that message, that system counted. No need to upload it, even though the tooltip will recommend you do for nanites. In fact, as thousands of people will need eight systems, I'd recommend not uploading too many directly around the expedition path, unless you're exploring it properly. For this, make sure you have the three warp hypercores you were rewarded, ready, as well as the freighter hyperdrive upgrade installed, giving you more than 30 warps. Then pick a direction and start warping in a line. Try to stick to the same direction each time. The glowing center of the galaxy is a good point of reference for your direction if you need one. After two to three warps, you should be outside of the expedition path where most systems will be discovered, and you'll then most likely see almost nothing but fresh systems. It's time for a few bonus tips for getting the most out of your expedition runs. These tips are aimed at those who start the expedition with the terminal in the anomaly from an existing safe. First of all are the inventory slots. Many milestones will reward exosuit, multi-tool and starship inventory slots. The beachhead expedition even rewards bulkheads for increasing freighter inventory space and salvage frigate modules for purchasing freighter base rooms and tech. You can take all of these items back to your main save and you should, as otherwise it's a big waste to let their results disappear into the ether. To take the inventory slots that are rewarded, simply back up to the screen when it tries to get you to unlock the slots. Exiting out of that screen will just give you the slots as items, which can be used later at the appropriate augmentation terminals. Gathering those augments as well as things like salvage data that are often rewarded by milestones will hugely benefit a save that doesn't have all slots and recipes unlocked. Alternatively, if you have all of the few hundred base building recipes available from the construction terminal in the anomaly, you can buy blueprints from there on the expedition subsave that only cost one each, like posters. Doing this will give you 120 nanites per unlocked recipe when ending the expedition, at the terminal on the primary save. Another trick you can do is to get multiple of the previous expedition rewards, namely ships and multi-tools. Expeditions have a copy feature, allowing you to copy the currently active ship or multi-tool from your primary to expedition subsave, or vice versa. If you want multiple vultures to scrap and build your own with the paint and slot layout you like, just redeem the vulture on the expedition subsave and switch to the primary. You can then copy the ship and scrap it for the part, copying and scrapping as many times as you want or can afford with nanites. If you want Photonics Cores, a pulse engine tech previously only available with pre-order copies of No Man's Sky for the PS4, you can redeem the Starborn Runner ship on your Expedition subsave, as it has one installed. If you only want one, then just package it and take it with you. But if you want multiple, leave it in and copy the ship on the primary save, which will of course copy the technology installed in it. There are a bunch of things you can do to take better advantage of these expeditions when playing on existing saves. If these tips weren't quite what you were looking for, the step-by-step -step speed and efficiency guide will be released next. I already have the first draft of the route figured out and I'll be focusing entirely on that video until it releases. After which, all the guides, all the time, until the next Redux shows its face. Thanks all, have a great day.